registered for the tour. Inside these walls, thousands have lived out of touch with reality. Welcome everybody, my name is Maxine Schmidt. Your tour guide, so you came up the steps, has been accused of not facing reality too. I am a part of a group of people called the Friends of the Kirkbride. That's Jean, Maxine's husband, who just ducked out of that shot and into this one. We will make our way out onto the bus. The bus driver, she's thinking, Mike, is their son. As we continue around, look out the right windows and see the beautiful design in the concrete there. And this, from an angle the bus can't reach, is the Kirkbride. Built in the late 1800s, a third of a mile from end to end, half a million square feet. It was, on a hill in Fergus Falls, Minnesota's grandest insane asylum. Some of the treatment done here on campus included the electric shock treatment. They did do some lobotomies here. Maxine will explain it all, how the ornate asylums built across the country were named for Thomas Kirkbride, a Philadelphia physician who championed the movement of the mentally ill from dark basements and jail cells to sunlit and architecturally grand asylums. We like to bring people in here. But what to do with the Fergus Falls Kirkbride when large asylums fell out of favor and closed? So we will quickly walk enter the realist. I just felt that you know probably the inevitable was is that we we're ultimately going to have to you know to tear the facility down. City Administrator and, Mark uh, Siebert came to believe no practical use could be found for a building so old and so large and he heard it you know, from the other realists in town, too. When are you going to tear that damn thing down? But the realists ran into the dreamers. Mm -hmm. We're stuck by our guns. Mm -hmm. The retired electrician and the homemaker So let's quickly move on. started organizing tours to raise public awareness. We must be getting close to 500, probably. And we've had thousands of people. Here is the post office. They gathered signatures. We were just people with passion. Combined forces with yeah. others. About 40 people at that, that first meeting. So glad I came. Mm -hmm. Me too. And found support so, even in the um, families of the patients. It, who lived and died here. Actually, it's kind of a healing thing. As many as 2,000 residents at a time, including the father of a young Joan Anderson. This place has too much history, too much pain uh, for demolition. Even when the city suggested saving the Kirkbride's tower, and tearing down the rest. The beautiful wood parquet floor. The Schmitz and their group stood their ground. Were you frustrated with them? Oh, oh yeah. Which is a good thing. We are in an outside porch. Because it looks like Jean and Maxine were right. They uh, plan to turn this into a grand hotel with all the amenities. A 120 room hotel, 60 apartments, restaurants, and a mental health museum. All of it contained in the letter of intent signed over the summer by a Georgia developer and agreed to by the city. You know, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> I think it's just a great example of what a group of citizens that are committed to a cause can do. There's an old bathroom up here. Still and who'd live in a former city. asylum? I'd live here if I could. Student I Aaron really Botko would. comes here often enough as it is. As much as I can. Count her as a dreamer, too. It's a castle. It's like from the books that, you know, you read when you're a when you're reading your little three-year-old a fairy tale, it's, you know, it's beautiful. But the keepers of the castle didn't just see its beauty. Thank you all. The dreamers fought to keep down. it standing <laughs> for another tour of duty. We didn't go away. We didn't go away. Boyd Hooper, Care 11 News, Fergus Falls.